You know, you, you, you run out of room on a desk, don't you? Good morning. Good morning. Please, uh, if you can, I please, please, I encourage you to go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the authorized version of the scriptures. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we will be looking at today. Okay, read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things are, be so. Read along with me because so sometimes I skip a groove and the mouth goes quicker than the brain. Keep an eye on me, okay? Today, however, brethren, I am going to be utilizing this thing. You see this? This is actually a Bible. It is. What is a Bible? A collection of books, okay? This has a pure Cambridge edition uh, authorized version in it on this side. But it's, it's in that paragraph form. Oh, I hate that. I, I, I absolutely det I despise a paragraph form of the scriptures. It's still the scriptures. Uh, praise the Lord, but, you know, I don't like paragraph form. I, 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 I despise that. It, it, it's, harder, it's harder to memorize. It's harder to mark. Um, but anyway, I'm going to be using this today, which has the non-King James Version, the Nutty Idiots Version, and thanks to Vato, Nitwit Living in the Trash translation. But also today, we are going to look at the oh, holy... New American Standard, which has been rewritten by uh, John MacArthur and being paraded around by his Jesuit buddy, James White. And also, we are going to be looking at the extremely satanic version. Okay? Why, Brad? Christian. <laughs> Catholic. You know you're a slave? Now, hold up. Hold up. Now, you go to a Christian with this, brother, sister, saint. It's like, you're a slave. The Christian has been taught what? Well, yeah, I'm a slave to righteousness. Oh. What is a slave? What is a slave? For that, like I said, <laughs> running, you know, I could have a mile-wide desk and still not have enough room. Going to be uh, looking up slave. Thank you. You know who you are. Going to be looking up the word, just the word slave. From Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Now, I also remember, I also remember the hunter. The English Jesuit provincial. Oh, that one's going to set you off, isn't it there, you stupid bloke, huh? Yeah, because he, he's your master. He's your owner, isn't he, boy? Yeah, go bark like the little chihuahua, huh? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, that, that's an inside thing. Most of you won't get that. But you will. I hope you get, I hope you get the poison crown from licking his shoes. Anyway. <laughs> the hunter once said in a video, which I'm sure has been expunged, that the scriptures doesn't use the word slave. Now mistakes happen. But see, that one guy who I'm referring to from England, the hunter, um, he ain't stupid. He's not. Um, he's, uh, he's not. He's not even willfully ignorant. He's very intelligent. He's very crafty. He's very subtle. Oh, that dude speaks like a dragon. Oh. You see, with the one bloke, uh, you can just scratch him and he'll he'll blow his cover. He's, 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 at one time he was a somewhat effective deceiver. But see, he's got a reputation now as being an odious whatever. And everyone that he comes, everyone that he comes in contact with, Sooner or later, he finds a problem with them and starts some kind of issue with them. But see, the hunter, on the other hand, is a little bit more dangerous. 
because he is a smooth talker, boy. And hey, Mr. Hunter, you, you see me. Remember our email conversation that we had a couple of years ago about your little Chihuahua? Oh, yeah. But anyway, he said that the word slave doesn't appear in Scripture. And like I said, I'm sure he has expunged that video where he has said that, like he does with, like these devils like to do. That is not true. The word slave and slaves does appear in the authorized version of scriptures. We will look at that in a little while. But let's first, let's first look at what is a slave? What is a slave? Now, there are many, many things here in, uh, uh, <coughs> there are quite a few here in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. But we are just going to look at the singular slave, what that is, okay? Slave, from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. A person who is wholly subject to the will of another. Well, that's what we are to Christ. Here's the danger with this. One who has no will of his own. Oh boy, no will of his own, but whose person, spirit, soul, and body, and services are wholly under the control of another. Now, brethren, now we have a problem, we're, we're not done with this yet, but we got a problem here. We got a problem here, okay? I don't know about you. But the authorized version of the scriptures, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God, doesn't call us slaves. We are servants. See, a servant has a choice. A servant denotes what? Free will. And dude, there will be links in the description box. Um, and, and this one... God, I give credit to where it's due, even though I don't like the source at all. Even the fake gracers, the sleazy believists, get this one right about free will. Even they get this one right. We have free will. Scripture, even in this dispensation, is loaded with evidence that we have the ability to choose. We are, look at this, you can't see that unless you have the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Look at this. A person who is wholly subject to the will of another. Now, amen. We are, we are subject to the will of Christ. We sense. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. One who has no will of his own. Come here, brother, sister. Uh, did you have no will of your own when you uh, sinned last night? Oh, you didn't sin last night. Oh, oh, so you must be another another Christ, huh? Get off your high horse, pal. Huh? Did you did uh, did you have a will to do what you know you shouldn't do, like uh, get drunk on alcohol, smoke a cigarette, hmm? look at something that you shouldn't have, listen to something that you shouldn't have, huh? But we're slaves. That means we have no will of our own. Well, and see how they get around, try to get around this is, well, the Lord in you takes away that so you are his property. And yes, we are bought with a price. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. But we have free will. And see, the Calvinist comes into this thing, okay, and tries to dispute that we have free will. But see, again, they get really crafty about it and say, well, those who are elect have free will. Free will to do as he elects, while the unelect have free will. See, they have free will. But see, uh, when it comes to salvation, it is, number one, a free gift. Okay? We are justified freely by his grace. Okay? All right? But we are not slaves. We are not slaves. Now, once we are saved, 
we are sealed until the day of redemption, and we're going to look at that today, uh, of course. But um, uh, we are. We are sealed until the day of redemption. Christ lives within us. But you got to remember, dear friend, the Lord is not holding a gun at your head, forcing you to do His will. If that were the case, number one, that would be totally contrary to Scripture and to the doctrine for us today in this dispensation. And number two, that would show cruelty. Because you're going to serve a God who's going to force you to love Him? Even and an atheist can figure that one out, right? But no, no. Christianity t calls you a slave when the scriptures calls you a servant. And who, no brainer here, who is all about getting slaves? Oh, that be Rome! Yeah, because once we, the body of Christ, are out of here, they want to bring about um, a system and whatnot that uh, one man will be able to rule the whole world. That man of sin, the son of perdition. Napoleon Bonaparte uh, made that wonderful quote about how it's their goal to have the uh, world controlled by the volition of a single man, meaning that man of sin, the son of perdition. Right now, uh, the one who is controlling the entire world, as for means of judgment, as allowed by the Lord, yes, the earth is the Lord's, okay, yes. But see, for judgment's sake, Satan is allow, being allowed to do what he will. Okay, remember, the Lord never disputed that. When uh, Satan says to the Lord, all this will I give you if you fall down and worship me. You know, because this has been given unto me. He never disputed it. Okay, why? Because it's that way for judgment. The earth is the Lord's. Okay, but the one who is in control right now is Arturo Sosa. The black pope. The one that uh, Francis... <coughs> excuse me. Is subservient to. Okay? Arturo Sosa is the deadliest man on earth. Okay? He really is. But Rome wants slaves. Just like slaves during the Dark Ages. So... When Rome gives you your Bibles here, it teaches you that you're a slave. Friend, Catholic, listen to me. Christian, you need the right book. You need the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? You're not a slave. But yet, Christian, you are a slave. You are a slave. You're a slave to Rome. You're a slave to the Hua. But let's 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 move along here. A per slave, as defined by Webster's 1828 dictionary, a person who is wholly subject to the will of another, one who has no will of his own, but whose person and service services are wholly under the control of another. In the early state of the world, and to his day, uh, and to this day, among some barbarous nations, prisoners of war are considered and treated as slaves. The slaves of modern times are more generally purchased, like horses and oxen. And of course, Scripture does a lot for bond servants. Okay, bond servants which is different from a slave. A slave doesn't have any will. A bond servant still has... Hey! For example, someone who is an actual slave could still resi resist and reject, but yet probably get killed or tortured for it. But they could still do it. Okay? A slave has no will of their own. Okay? No will of their own. God doesn't want a robot serving him. Rome does. Definition number two. One who has lost the power of resistance 
or one who surrenders himself to any power whatsoever, as a slave to possession, to lust, to ambition. Walker. Hmm. So, are all our lusts and temptations, are they all gone for us? No. <laughs> Especially us as saints. Uh, they seem to be compounded, don't they? Don't they? Yeah. Number three. A mean person. One, who, one in the lowest state of life. Definition number four. A drudge. A drudge. D-R-U-D-G-E. One who labors like a slave. Hence, slave labor. Okay? Then you have slave born, slave like, slaver, uh, slaver, okay? Slaver, to, okay, stuff like that. I actually, slaver, uh, let's, let's keep reading. Slave. To drudge, to toil, to labor as a slave. Slave born. Born into slavery. We're not born into slavery. We have free will. Okay. Slave-like. Like or becoming a slave. Again. God doesn't want a robot. God does not want a slave. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Christian, Catholic, okay? Guess what? You get the right book, God's book, he'll tell you the truth. You ain't a slave, boy. You have free will. You have to make the right choices. We've talked, there will be links for you in the description box. But now, let's get to some reading of scripture and unfortunately we're going to read a, out of a couple Bibles. Okay? Romans chapter 6. Now we're going to get this and then we're going to look at what the scriptures say about slave. Okay? Alright? Because the word slave does appear in scripture. Yes it does. Okay? Romans chapter 6. Now from the scriptures if you read Romans chapter 6, the, the thing of free will screams at you. You cannot read Romans chapter 6 from the authorized version of the scripture and have this delirious, ludicrous notion that you are a slave. Okay? That, that's nonsense. But when you go to... Try this! I've done this before. So are you a slave? That's right, I'm a slave to Jesus. So you have no free will of your own? I've had some Christians say no. It's like, really? What'd you do last night? Oh, you watched the Hollywood movie, huh? You know, um, I shall set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of those that turn aside, shall not cleave unto me. You know, watching Hollywood movies, you really shouldn't do. But you had the free will to do that, didn't you? Why are Christians being told, being taught, that they are slaves? So when the body of Christ, the church of the living God, get redeemed and caught up, taken out of the way before the time of Jacob's trouble, these Christians that get left behind are going to be a lot more pliable and a lot more easily led even than they are today. The thing that is hindering letting is we, the body of Christ. But once we get out of the way, wow. But! Romans chapter 6. Uh, you know, I hate paragraph form. I, I really hate it. I really hate it. But this has the Nutty Idiots version, and it also has the non-King James version in it as well. And um, so, <clears throat> that's why we're, so I'm, I'm going to, just read from this because I, I can't. I can't, brother, <laughs> sister. I, 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 I despise paragraph form scriptures. There's still the scriptures. Therefore, you love them. But uh, like I said, I, I have a, a brother also gave me a wonderful Cambridge that also is a paragraph form. It's like, thank you, brother. <laughs> but okay. Romans chapter six. 
What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ, into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Baptized, identified in him. Okay? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. That denotes what? Choice. Choice. Okay? Free will. Like I said, even these wicked, sleazy, believist, fake gracers get the free will thing right. Even they get that right. And pretty well, too. I mean, when it comes to the argument of free will, hey, a fake gracer, he, they did, bravo, you devils. Bravo, bravo. And that's worse on you because you're, uh, the way you're deceiving people, they are willingly choosing to go to hell because of your lies. But they get the free will argument right. They do. They, they do. God, I hate giving them devils any credit. <laughs> but they do. Even they get that one right. Okay? That ought to tell you something. For if, and, and, okay, now, Catholic, <laughs> you studied the scriptures, pal. Here's what you do. When you come to a scriptural if, here's what you do, okay? You get your little pen. Circle that if. Go ahead. Go ahead. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. We shall be, excuse me, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Again, um, to be a saint, to be of the church of God, which is the church of the living God, it starts, it's, pre, it's, it's uh, predicated, it's set in motion first by what? Death. Which our beloved <coughs> sleazy believists are against. Oh, they talk about the death of Christ. Yes, they do. But see, a death to self. Look at that verse. Okay? Well, look at verse 4 and 5 again. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We have a choice. We have a choice. And a lot of people who try to get you under the law, like Catholics, like um, uh, black Hebrew Israelite heretics like Mark the Messenger, um, the fact that we are saved but yet have the free will to... We as saints can make every bad choice just like a lost person does. Our consequences are going to be pretty severe. We're not going to lose our salvation because it's not our salvation to lose. But we can make the same choices that a lost... This, this is nuts and bolts stuff. But see, the constant wearing away of the stones with the lies and the Bibles that come from Rome, okay? For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, if we're saved, and, have, and that salvation begins with a death to me, with a death to you. But then again, comes the sleazy believers and says, that's a work, just believe and receive, and they skip over the requirement of death. Death is a requirement. Was not death a requirement for our salvation? Give me a break, pal. Okay? Uh, hold on, hold on right now. Uh, uh, death to himself. Uh, for uh, description box stuff. And the earth is the Lord's. Okay? That one guy. Anyway, sorry about that. Okay, let's continue. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin because this is where sin is, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Now, very quickly, when you look in like the uh, non-King James Version, uh, 
Uh, let me see. That, what is verse is this? This is verse 6. Let me see. What does it say? Okay. Hey, yeah. Uh, here's from the Nutty Idiots version from uh, uh, verse 6. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be... See, body ruled by sin. The body of sin. Oh! So then your body can be perfect? And no wonder you went off so crazily, you stupid bloke. <laughs> For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Oh, the Bible say the same thing. Even though the Bibles disagree with each other. And the Bible there has nothing to do with the scriptures here. <laughs> Muslims can point that one out for you. Atheists can point that one out for you. We don't really need to worry with that one, brethren, because our enemies ourselves, themselves, excuse me, they, they do that themselves. They point out, it's like, ah, the Bibles contradict one another. Well, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> they all contradict the scriptures. Isn't that interesting? For he that is dead in the scriptures is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, Catholic, not daily at your little stupid mass, okay? But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. What does a Bible have to say about verse 11? We're, we're, this is real time, obviously. We're going through this together. Uh, what verse is that? That's verse 11. What does it say here in the non-King James Version? Okay. Likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay. What about here in the Nutty Idiots Version? In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hmm. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, Romans 6 verse 11. Uh, Romans 6 verse 11. In the, and this is the 1984 edition, not the one that they got now, which is worse. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. <laughs> and the 2011... NIV is worse than the 1984 NIV. <laughs> you read an NIV, huh? No wonder you're so messed up, Christian. No wonder you're so messed up. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Verse 12, denoting choice. We have free will. We are not slaves. I'm not a slave. I'm a bondservant because I was bought with a price. But remember, God is not holding a gun to my head. Neither is Satan holding a gun to your head. Okay? you got to remember that. You are being lied to, Christian, and the lies that you are being fed in your little phallus houses are coming from Rome. You're not a slave. Rome, Satan, wants you to be a slave. Now, let's look at verse 12 in the Nutty Idiot's Virgin. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies, body that you obey its, evils, its evil desires. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. See, also, this is telling us in verse 12 that our mortal body is sinful. Okay? We've talked about this at length. Okay? The mortal body, this 
mortal coil, as Shakespeare said, is sinful. Okay? All right? And remember, devil, Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful. Yes, it was. But see, God in that flesh never sinned and kept the law perfectly. Hence, that sinful flesh was sanctified because even though itself was sin sinful, because Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, never sinned. Hence, that body that Jesus Christ is come into was sanctified, holy, sinless. That's how that works. Okay? All right? Go hit your head against the brick wall, and I hope them cigarettes make you cough, you devil. Okay? That's how that's explained. Video for that uh, will be in the description box again. Okay? All right? Judge not. <laughs> All right? We go over that quite thoroughly or thoroughly, whatever, whatever. I can't pronounce that right. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. But then again, verse 12, again, denotes what? Choice. Freedom. Okay. We have all things are lawful for us, but not all things are expedient. We're not slaves, Christian. We're not slaves. You are showing your allegiance to Satan when you joyfully say, Yep, I'm a slave from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ doesn't want a slave. He wants a servant. And a servant has the freedom, the ability to choose. And that <laughs> is found without scripture. Even under the law, they had free will. In the Garden of Eden, blah, blah, come on, they had free will. Okay? In the kingdom of heaven, you have free will. Okay? Eternity, there's no sin. <laughs> so, all right? Verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Here's the uh, New American Standard, which has now been remade into the LSD Bible, written by John MacArthur, a lost devil Calvinist who Jesuit James White is parading around is superior than the scriptures. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, what is that, verse 13, from the New American Standard? And do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Okay? And what does this say in... Um, and uh, the Nutty Idiot's version, do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to Him as an instrument of righteousness. Hmm. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, whatever. All right. Now, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Hmm. And it's interesting. You lost people. The very law you're going to be judged by at the great white throne of judgment. The law as found in the authorized version of the scripture. That does not mean today that we are not without law. We are under law to Christ, which Paul kind of expounds on in Romans chapter 13. Okay? Idolatry is not touched on specifically in Romans 13, but uh, you read the Pauline epistles um, and the book of Acts to 
uh, about idolatry and worshiping of idols? Come on. Okay, this that one's pretty easy. But then again, you Catholics, they do this. They take the Tenth Commandment and make it up to two commandments and take away the Second Commandment. So coveting is uh, one of the Ten Commandments. Twice. Oh, you dear Catholic, I, I, I pity you. I pity you. If you're willfully ignorant, stupid, then I don't. But anyway. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. And this is actually what the fake gracers uh, do. They allow for license, for justification. Don't worry about it. You're saved because you just believe. Don't worry about it. You shouldn't do that, but don't worry about it. It's not going to cost you your salvation. But yet, the way you serve the Lord reflects him. And then when you got guys like Tom and his two little idiot girls that are with him, justifying sin, justifying his viewing of pornography, and he's a fake gracer too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, 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 but then again, they're reflecting their Lord Satan, who they serve. Now, here's where we're going to get to, first, let's read this in the scriptures, okay? What shall we, what then, shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants, servants, to obey his servants, ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Now John MacArthur gets about, well, the Greek word, hey, which one? The biblical Greek. Oh, you mean the originals that don't exist anymore, right? Oh, you mean the ones that are held in the Vatican, uh, the Sinaiticus and Vaticanus that have erasure marks and don't even agree with themselves, huh? Oh, uh, which edition of the Nestle-Alan Greek are you talking about? Which edition of the Texas Receptus Greek are you talking about? Which one, pal? Hmm? Hmm? See, watch out for these devils, like Jeremiah 16 Project. Who, well, the Greek and the Hebrew, which one? Well, the biblical. Oh, the ones that don't exist anymore? And your Jesuit scholars will even tell you that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, y'all you all know where I think you guys can go. Okay. Anyway, verse 16. Let's, let's read from, now this is not the LSD. God forbid I'd never buy that piece of garbage. But this is the New American Standard, one of Jesuit James White's favorite, and also a Calvinist. Uh, James White is also a Calvinist. A Jesuit Calvinist. Wow, huh? You know, you, you're play acting. You know that, right? <laughs> but uh, John MacArthur is also a Calvinist. All right. Verse 16 from the New American Standard. And we wonder why so these Christians are so messed up, brethren. Do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness? So, according to this, calls you a slave. What about what about the extremely satanic version, huh? What about that? Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? Huh. Oh, and what about the non-King James Version? What about the non-King James Version, huh? Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey? Christianity is calling you a slave. Christian, which Christ are you serving? 
Well, this ought to be obvious for you by now. Okay? If you're serving a Christ who calls you a slave, guess what? You're not serving the true Christ of the Scriptures. The Christ of the Scriptures will have you to be His servant. He wants you to choose willingly what is good. And there is none good but who? God. You Christian, you Catholic, you are a slave. You're a slave to Rome. You're a slave to the devil. Saints, we're servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, amen! Verse 17 from the Scriptures. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed choice. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of uh, feelings, <laughs> form of doctrine, which was delivered you. Now, now, okay, let's let's come on. This is a little tedious, but I want you to see this, Christian. Okay? You're being lied to. You're being referred to something that God never once referred to you as. A slave. You want to be a Christian, huh? So you're a slave? Hmm? Come on! Answer that! A slave appears twice. We'll look at that later. You're not a slave. But you Christian, especially you Catholic, you are a slave. And Satan wants you to be that way. Okay? Verse 17 from the New American Standard. But thanks be to God that though you were slaves to sin, really, you became obedient from the heart to that form of teaching. Oh boy, imagine that. They removed doctrine. You know there's a difference between teaching and doctrine? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, even atheists could figure that one out. Okay. Okay. That form of teaching which were committed, which were committed and ends with a comma. And, and then in the scriptures, uh, but God be thanked, it ends with a period. Oh, but they all say the same thing. <laughs> really? Verse 17 from the Nutty Idiots Version. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from the heart that pattern of teaching that has now claimed, that has now claimed your allegiance. Well, I mean, that, uh, how stupid. How, how ridiculous. And see, they take out doctrine, teaching. There's a, whoa, boy. There's a big difference between teaching and doctrine. Bloop. Wow. Okay. All right. And what about the extremely satanic version? We're going to do this. Okay. You need to see this, Christian. Okay. You think this is an improvement to this. This, the scriptures, you're a servant. This wants to enslave you to Satan. You have free will. You're not a slave unless you're a Catholic or a Christian. And remember, Catholics are Christians. Okay? Verse 17. But thanks be to God that you were you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. I wonder why Rome has a problem with doctrine. And why do they put teaching? Well, if it's teaching and not doctrine, that means you have to go to the Jesuit priest. Oh, excuse me, the uh, Dallas Theological Cemeterian or wherever you're from. Okay, you have to go to them to get clarification instead of the spirit that isn't there in most Christians and not in one Catholic. The spirit that is in a Catholic is that spirit of Antichrist. Okay? Verse 18. From the scriptures. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Now this, this is 
you know, I'd love to see a Muslim uh, just rip this one apart. Uh, but then again, Muslims are slaves to Allah anyway, so they probably wouldn't. But look at that verse 18. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Free from sin. Meaning, we have a choice now. We have the Lord because we know what is truth, because the truth lives within us. It's not that, that we were slaves without our free will. We have, you lost people have free will. Okay? You have free will. Check this out. Look at, the, look at this. Verse 17 from the New American Standard. Or 18. Having, be, having been freed from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Righteous slaves. Righteous slaves held against your own will, but righteous. Think about that. Think about that. You know, with your stupid God loves you unconditionally. Uh, no, you reject the gospel one time. God's wrath is for you. We've covered that on many occasions. Righteous slaves of righteousness. A slave has no will of their own. But yet, without a will of your own, you're, you're committed to righteousness. Does that make any sense? Of course, a Christian looking to defend Rome. Yeah! You messed up anyway. <laughs> How does that make sense? How can slaves of righteousness... It's like military intelligence. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a, a God-fearing uh, Republican or Demokami. Okay, They just don't go together doesn't work it doesn't work it doesn't work and of course okay let's keep it on with this um, verse 18 from the nutty idiot version you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to right slaves to righteousness pause the video stop and muse upon that how does that make sense how does being a slave to righteousness even equate? It doesn't. <laughs> and having been from the extremely satanic version, and being ha and having been set free from sin, having become slaves of righteousness. Wow. God doesn't want you to be a slave. You were brought out of your lost life to be a servant of Christ because all you knew how to do was to serve sin. You're not a slave. But you go to Rome, who gives you Rome, who gives you the extremely satanic version, the NIV, all the Bibles. You're a slave. Christian, you're nothing but a slave. And what's sad, truly sad, is you rejoice in that. You rejoice in that. You rejoice in that. When God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, through His Word, the authorized version, never once refers to you as a slave. Not once. This, this ought to concern you, Christian, Catholic. This ought, to, this ought to fret you something fierce. This ought to give you cause for great concern. I would hope so. I would truly hope so. 
Let's continue. Verse 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Verse 19. Beautiful. See, you before the Lord saved you, the only thing you knew how to do was sin. That didn't mean you were a slave. You had the choice whether to do this sin, that sin, or the other sin. Okay? But when God got a hold of you and broke you of your self-righteousness and you died to yourself, and you decided to go that way, God doesn't force you to Him. See, this is nothing by force. This is where the Calvinist is uh, clearly rebuked. The Calvinist video will be in the description box as well. Okay? You have free will. And look at verse 19 from the scriptures. Okay? For you, when you were lost, the only thing you knew how to do was sin. Okay? And you can pick from that sin, that sin, that sin, that sin, and that sin. You had free will. You have free will. But now that you come to Christ on His terms and He saves you and seals you, once saved, always saved, now you have choice, even more so. Are you going to follow what the Lord will have you to do from Scripture? Or are you going to turn back to your own vomit? See, you have that choice. Christianity wants to take that away from you and make you a slave. You're not a slave. A slave doesn't have free will. A slave doesn't have a choice. Servants do. We choose to serve. We cho I choose. God isn't holding the gun at my head. God doesn't force me to walk in his precepts today. No, he doesn't. And if anyone says that he does, they're lying to you and they're uh, an agent of the Vatican. Okay? But what a beautiful verse showing you your free will as a saint. But then again, what does Rome do? What does Rome do? Who wants you to be a slave to that man of sin? The son of perdition? A slave to their system of, yeah, you got to go to the Jesuit priest. You can't trust yourself. Well, you shouldn't trust yourself. Excuse me. That was a stupid statement. You shouldn't trust the Lord. That was a stupid statement. Excuse me. We don't trust ourselves. Excuse me. Let me let me rebuke myself here for all of you to see. Uh, uh, Proverbs 29, verse uh, 28. <laughs> Proverbs 29, 28. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. That was... See? <laughs> I make mistakes. Uh, 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 28, uh, what is it? Uh, 28, 26. Proverbs 28, 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. And a fool says in his own heart, there is no God. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Okay? Excuse me. Okay? <laughs> Pick your part. But we are to trust the Lord. Rome doesn't want you to trust the Lord. They want you to go to the priests. They want you to be a slave. Okay. Forgive me for saying you should trust in yourself. Okay? Rebuke my, the Lord handled that really quickly, didn't he? Okay? But where were we? Verse 19. I am using an example from everyday life from the Nutty Idiot's version because of your human limitations. Human! Human, huh? Ah, are you a human? Are you a human? Are you a human? Link for uh, check that video out. Are you a human? That that one was interesting. That was a really interesting video. But are you a human? Yeah. Okay. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. What a disgusting perversion of God's Word. But, and let's see. Okay, let's see. Staying with what we're going doing here. Verse 19 from the New American Standard. I'm speaking in human terms. Because of the weakness of your flesh, 
For just as you presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness. Wow. Wow. So now present yourselves members as slaves to righteousness resulting in sanctification. Oh, okay. All right. Let's look, look, check this out. This this is something that and Jesuit James White and MacArthur Doodle and whatnot, they love this. And now, you know, Jesuit James, both Calvinists, parading around the LSD version. Okay, look at this. Look at this. The beauty of Scripture. Verse 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Beautiful. Beautiful. Praise the Lord. You get to this tripe. I'm speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness... You know, you can get unclean by putting your hand, by working in the dirt. Resulting in further lawlessness. So now present your members as slaves to righteousness, resulting in sanctification? It's not what the scriptures say. Oy vey, man. Oy vey. And of course, the extremely satanic version. I'm not guessing this is any better. I'm speaking in her human terms because of the because of your natural limitations. Oh the the Bibles all say the same thing. Uh, compare what we just read in the uh, New American Standard to this. Are they saying the same thing? Are they? <laughs> Come on guys. Get your head for, out from betwixt Rome's buttocks. Ay, ay, ay. For just as once, pre, for just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. And in the Nutty Idiots uh, version, it's uh, at least they got holiness right. <laughs> wow wow it's a it's an uphill battle with some of these Christians especially when you got a Christian that's going to waste their time in this okay verse 20 for when you were for excuse me for when from the scriptures for when ye were the servants of sin ye were free from righteousness. Not the idiot's version. Verse 20. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. Control of righteousness. <laughs> wow. Verse 20 from the New American Standard. For when, ye were the, for when you were slaves to sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. You were free in regard to righteousness. That doesn't even make sense the way they have that word. <laughs> and ye, by the way, is plural. More than one. You can be more than one. But it can also, more, more often than not, not is singular. See, when you come to the scriptures and you see ye, the, thou. The and thou are singular. Ye are pl is plural, more than one. Okay? So you have confusion on the onset. Okay? Confusion in the onset in these Bibles. Alright? Verse 20 from the extremely satanic version. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So basically the same as the New American Standard. But... Uh, not the same as the Nutty Idiots version. And we haven't even looked at the NLT or the non-King James version. Okay? Because these are the more popular translations. 
Verse 21. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Verse 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God. Choice. How, how beautiful. Beautiful. God doesn't want a robot. Rome, Satan, wants a robot. God wants servants. Satan, Rome, Christianity wants slaves. Christian, when you're like, I'm a slave for Jesus, shame on you. You ought to be embarrassed by that. You that that coming out of your mouth ought to make you wretch. Shame on you. Calling yourself a slave for Jesus. You're a slave to Rome. You're a slave to Satan, son. God help you. God doesn't want you to, as a slave. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. There's another good verse for you, Catholic who don't know whether or not you're going to go to heaven when you die. Because it's the sin of presumption. Okay? They, Catholics don't deny that. They call us saints heretics because we believe the scriptures that say we can know that we're going to heaven when we die. There's a good verse for you right there. Verse 22 from the Nutty Idiots version. Yeah, we skipped one, but... But now that you have been set free from sin... And it becomes slaves of God. Slaves of God. The benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. Now, eternal life. Eternal life. Scripture says everlasting life. Everlasting. Well, they're the same. This dies. Our, our body, our body that is made of the earth dies. You and I have a spirit and a soul. Those are eternal. Our spirit and soul is going to be in one of two places. With the Lord, with everlasting life, or in hell. Burning in the lake of fire. See, our spirit and soul are eternal. Our bodies are temporal. Okay? Alright? You do have eternal life. But where are you going to spend that? Huh? An everlasting life with God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. You know the Holy Ghost and Lord is that said? Spirit? Huh? Oh, what verse is that again? Verse 22. From the New American Standard. But now having, be, having been freed from sin. And enslaved to God. You derive your benefit. Resulting in sanctification and the outcome. Eternal life. Yeah, eternal life in hell. You know... A lost person reading something like this, it's like, God's a slave owner? God wants me to be a slave? And naturally, and see, and this is, and this is the danger of it. This is the danger of it. Because, again, you going around parading God loves you unconditionally to Christ rejecting sinners, that's a lie. That's not true. Okay? It's not true. So when a lost person reads something that isn't the scripture and sees that, number one, that God doesn't love you unconditionally, and number two, that he wants you to be a slave, well, that's pretty darn right cruel, isn't it? Isn't it? Catholic, Christian, have you considered that the God who you are serving 
which is Satan, is cruel to make you his slave when God the Father never calls you one? What's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you? Well, we, we, we know what's wrong with you. You know, and you're educated people, remember. You, you've got the degrees. You've, you've got, you, some of you even got a good enough diploma. I don't, okay? Obviously. All right? Okay? You're the educated ones, and you can't figure this stuff out. Hmm? You got all your books on the spiritual life, all your commentaries. That ought to scare you. You know, like Vernon McGee, um, uh, Matthew Henry, which didn't complete it, and stuff like that. MacArthur's commentary. Ruckman's commentary. Okay? All right? Why are there so many of those? Have you ever, can't you get this? The blind lead the blind. I pity you Catholics. I really do. You Christians who, and like I said, I've experienced this. I'm a slave for Jesus. Your Jesus wants slaves. The Jesus Christ of the scriptures wants servants. And how appropriate. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life, right there, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now look at everlasting life and eternal life, okay? Look at how everlasting life, you know, in contrast to someone who is a servant to sin, and how the wages of sin is death, but if you continue in sin, if you're not saved and you continue to choose sin, it's going to be death, which is what? Death, hell, and the grave? Okay, you see that contrast? You see that comparison that scripture makes? From the Nutty Idiots version. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And of course, the last one in the New American Standard. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we're not even going to bother with the uh, extremely satanic version. Okay? But the wages of sin is death. And you read over in Hebrews chapter 2. Like I said, <laughs> my desk is too small. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 on to verse 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. And the wages of sin is death, the power of death. Sin. Sin. Man brought sin into the world, as he did, by a choice. Who has the power of death? Satan. How? If you fall down and worship me, I'll so be thine. I'll give you what you want. See how that works? And deliver them who, who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Bondage. Now, some will argue, well, bondage is, a, is a slavery. Uh, no. You can choose to put yourself in the bondage. Hey, buddy. How's them cigarettes treating you? How's that liver of yours treating you? You keep uh, sipping on that whiskey, huh? How, how, how do you sleep unless you're uh, drugged up hmm, from watching all that television? Slave.
slave in the authorized version of the scripture. Jeremiah chapter 2. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 2. Verses 14 on to verse 19. Is Israel a servant? Question. Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? Israel, slave. Hmm. The young lions roared upon him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitant, and the children of Noph and Tafanes have broken the crown of thy head. Verse 17. Look at this verse. Hast thou not procured this unto thy? Self, in that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way not by force see verse 17 as far as slave is concerned even in the Old Testament under the law there was free will look at that verse question is slave in context anything to do with the body of Christ? <laughs> okay. Okay. And in context, is God calling Israel a slave? No. Because a slave doesn't have free will. And if God was calling Israel a slave in verse 14, what do you do with verse 17? That denotes that choice was made to reject the Lord. Huh? And know what hast thou, and now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt? To drink the waters of Shehor. But what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria? To drink the waters of the river. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. And thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. Again, is God calling Israel a slave? No. Because a slave doesn't have free will. And in verse 19 and verse 17 clearly denotes choice. Okay? But there's another appearance of the word of a variation of the word slave. Only two of them. And guess where that is? How appropriate. How 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 neat is it? <laughs> How meat is it? That word is found. Ah. <laughs> uh, Revelation 18. Imagine that. The second variation of slave at all found in Scripture is found in Revelation chapter 18, which is describing the destruction of Rome. Shall we read it? Not the whole chapter, but let's read it. From verse 7 on to, oh... Oh, let's read to verse 19. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I said the queen, and I am no widow. 
and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges them. Watch the previous video. Uh, Rome is Mystery Babylon. Okay? All right. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Praise the Lord. The merchandise of gold and silver, and precious stones and of pearls, and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble. Incidentally, it has been argued, well, the colors of Rome are white and gold, papal, uh, but look at the procession of the cardinals and bishops. Okay? It's purple and scarlet, dear people. The colors of Rome are purple and scarlet. You are being distracted by the papal white and gold, okay? But like I said, when you look at the procession of the uh, uh, cardinals, the bishops, and all that stuff, it's always, always purple and scarlet. They throw in a little green in there to the throw off people. It's like, see, green denotes Islam or something like nonsense like that, okay? Rome's colors are purple and scarlet, okay? And cinnamon and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine beasts, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. Isn't it? A, and compare that with what we just read in Jeremiah. How you go to Egypt and the Assyrian. Huh? Catholic. Christian. You are a slave. You are a slave to Rome. You are a slave to Satan. That ought to horrify you. Because God, these are the only appearances of any variation of the word slave in all of Scripture. God doesn't call you a slave. Okay, there's a bond servant. Yes, that's not a slave. A servant has a choice. A slave doesn't. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. And all things which are dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. And yes, once we get out of here and all these things that you Christians really find dainty and whatnot are going to be taken from you. Because the slave owner is going to collect. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Look at Rome, people. Come on. Come on. It, it's come on. This is Rome. Okay. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. Incidentally, you know, news people tell you that there's some guy of the house of Saud. The Saudis are like the wealthiest people on earth because they don't gauge their money by worldly terms. No, 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 no. The wealthiest people on earth are not the Ishmaelites. They're the Jesuits. The Jesuits. 
The Jesuits, Arturo Sosa, could, right now if he wanted to, could take Putin out, could take uh, Jim Kong, King Kong, Bundy, whatever his name, Korea, he could take out Biden with no problem, he could take out Trudeau, he could do anything he wants. He could start any war at any given moment. Okay? And the entire wealth of the world is at the back of the Jesuit order, at the Vatican. Okay? And the Federal Reserve is the Jesuits' personal bank. Okay? The distraction that that guy, whoever, those people in Saudi Arabia are the wealthiest, no, they're not. It's those of Rome. It's Rome, the Jesuits, that are the wealthiest. Don't forget that. And cries, when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this city? And they cast dusts on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she made desolate. And then we have Revelation 19, which is the second coming. And here's the picture for you, Catholic and Christian, that you need to keep in your mind. By the time those of you Christians that make it through the time of Jacob's trouble to this point, you're going to see all that you were trusting and hoped for go up in smoke. Most of you are going to be duped into taking the mark of the beast because of the sleazy believists, primarily, I believe. It's like, ah, oh, believe and receive. Don't worry, you're eternally secure during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is a lie. And see, this is giving you a picture that by the time most of you come to the acknowledgement, at least the acknowledgement of the truth, it's probably going to be too late for you. That's going to be it for this video. This, this, is, um, this was not the video that I was intending to do, but then again, I'm not the one who's doing you know, in charge here. This, this is something that was really disturbing to me. Uh, when you, because when you think about it, saved people of the Church of God, saints, we're not slaves. God never wants you to be a slave. He wants you to make the right choices. Rome, Satan, he wants you to be a slave. That's going to be it for this little video. Thank you for, so much for watching. If you do, love you. We'll see you in the next video.